Director of Research and Training, and Co-Founder of Health Builder Technologies Limited. She is also the Director of Research and Training at Ilios Incorporated. She is also a faculty speaker of anti-aging and regenerative medicine in American Society of Anti-Aging. Euromedicom and has received the Excellence of Speakers Award from the Minimally Invasive Plastic Surgery Association. Dr. Sofra is also the Creative Director of the Creative Arts Center Incorporated, a non-profit corporation that offers biological and psychodynamic psychotherapy within a nurturing environment that reinforces sublimation of aggression by enhancing creative tendencies. She has received numerous recognitions for minimally invasive plastic surgery in 2010 and International Speakers Award of American Academy of Anti-Aging in Thailand in 2009. Ladies and gentlemen, let's all welcome Dr. Sanya Sofra. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we're going to be talking about the uh, circadian skin and body tuning and how the body uses uh, its own clocks and its own signals to basically maintain health and uh, how we can kind of uh, uh, manipulate these uh, mechanisms to uh, maintain anti-aging, to reverse aging, which is what we all want at some point of our lives or another. So, we think that anti-aging is basically health. So if you're healthy, you don't age. I mean, you age because things go wrong inside the body, because the signals are fading, because your clocks are losing pace. So, we propose that health is the optimal functioning of our bodies, and that health and anti-aging depends on three main dimensions. The number one dimension is the proper functioning of biological circadian clocks. You know, everybody knows that cancer is basically when the body, the body's clocks are losing uh, their actual timing. Then signaling is the meaningful cellular communications. When communications are nonsense between proteins, then you have aging and you have disease. And the third is the time reversal mechanisms in our bodies are molecular. And all of them depend on signaling with respect to time. Now, every single cell in our body is controlled by its own clock. It has its own clock. Like uh, our bodies have a clock that we have to go to sleep, we have to wake up, and at some point everything ends and death uh, comes. Uh, it's the same thing with uh, every cell has its own clock. There is a birth and a death of each cell. And every cell depends on uh, the uh, uh, clock to save energy, to repair its DNA. And uh, that is uh, a number of uh, research studies that have been invested in this. Now, this biological timekeeping is actually a genetic process. It's determined uh, genetically from our genes. So due to the accessibility of the skin, this skin has offered itself uh, to kind of study the circadian clocks more closely, experimentally. And there have been a lot of studies that have made the skin circadian clock to control your ability to reduce DNA damage and also skin cancers. Now, the circadian clocks are located in the suprachiasmatic nucleus, uh, SCN for short, which is the brain's primary circadian pacemaker. But there are other aspects and other parts of the body where there are, we can see the circadian clocks and systemic clocks. At the cellular level, we have a range of clock genes, as we call it, that call the clock proteins. And this is what organizes and uh, uh, basically determines the functioning of our internal clocks. And the daily clock genes interact with uh, protein level fluctuations in the cells and also influence the cell activity, DNA repair, and so on and so forth that we spoke about previously. All of these timing processes are initiated and 
enforced, however, by signaling. So the problem with the clocks is that if the signaling starts being reduced, then your clocks might start losing their timing. And once that happens, very serious illnesses and of course aging will follow. So circadian clocks have to be combined with signaling within ourselves. Their circadian clocks have been associated with psoriasis and also, by the way, signaling is also associated with psoriasis. And recent studies have linked the circadian clocks to also other immune related disorders. And uh, also, as we're going to see later, it's, they're also related to cancer. Disruption within the circadian clocks machinery has been related to cancer. You know what happens with cancer cells, they basically keep regenerating endlessly, and the, the cell normally has to uh, go through the mitosis process, the birth, and the ending process. Uh, the cancer cells keep going on and on and on. They have lost their timing, basically. But there is also a new theory with signaling in cancer. So more recent theories say that what happens with cancer is that the DNA has been damaged and creates faulty proteins. And the faulty proteins give nonsense signals. And this, so the cell is like somebody who got the wrong directions for your home, for example. So you missed a couple of streets, and this person keeps driving endlessly round and round and round the neighborhood, and you never get it started. It's the same thing here. So these cells have lost, have missed some of the steps of mitosis, and they keep endlessly regenerating. So why do we focus, focus on cells rather than whole organs? Molecular mechanisms hold the secret of time reversal. This is a very important statement. If we lose an arm or a leg, we can never regenerate that. However, molecular mechanisms go back and forth in time endlessly. So basically, uh, our bodies consist of integrated parts. So our body has become a gestalt, it's a whole that is more than the sum of its parts. So we cannot just go back in time because going back in time will disorganize this uh, part, this whole, this, this gestalt, and then it will never be the same again. So that's why as a core mechanism we cannot go back in time. However, molecular mechanisms do that routinely. So you see here the GAP protein becomes GDP, that's a, a two phosphate, which becomes GTP, that's three phosphate, and then again again goes back to GDP, GAP. So it's like I become my mother and my grandmother, and my grandmother becomes my mother and my and myself continuously, all day long. They do that uh, as a routine. It's a fascinating thing to realize that molecular mechanisms can actually go back in time. Not only they can go back in time, but they do go back in time to basically get the body to function. A and B is another example of this process. It becomes ADP, which is two phosphates, which becomes ATP, which is three phosphates, and then it goes back into ADP and A and B and so on and so forth. It keeps going round and round and round. Something that we cannot accomplish as a whole mechanism. So another interesting uh, part of uh, time reversal is uh, uh, you know, free radicals. What free radicals are, they're missing one electron. So they're replenishing this one electron and they become whole molecules. It's as simple as that. So a free radical can become a stable molecule just by one electron addition to make it basically a healthy object. So here you have lack of health and health that can happen back and forth endlessly. 
So protons and electrons are interrelated to four molecules. So uh, molecules form proteins, proteins form cells, nerve cells communicate with the uh, central nervous system, the brain communicates with itself and so on. This whole system is a massive communication network. It's much, much bigger than the internet. So what happens with aging is that when there is a breakage of this network, then there is disease and aging. And this is what signaling is. So everyone understands that a whole will need calibration. So why should my bodies also need calibration, like tuning? And how do you do this tuning? You're gonna do this tuning, you cannot do it with four mechanisms. You can only do it with molecular mechanisms. So signaling science studies the resonant signals that can tune our system to optimize its function. We had an earlier lecture before when uh, Dr. Ahmad was saying that if I want to repair skin, I'm gonna give it skin. And if I wanna repair liver, I'm gonna give it liver. Here, to repair signals, we give signals. It's basically the same concept, but a little bit in a more complex sophisticated fashion. So cellular signaling technology, which we also call neurofrequency, is the science that investigates and proposes solutions on how to undertake and fulfill a body tuning by resonating the signals of cellular repair mechanisms that have broken down. And that has to happen within certain time, between certain discrete time intervals. And what do we mean by signals breaking down? So here you have a phrase, actually it's called alternating frequencies uh, forming a bio-language. This is the actual phrase, but here you see the phrase with the broken signals. We don't know what that means, but what we do from the outside, we do just that. We give the missing links, so the body basically repairs that and gets the, the uh, actual sentence that is trying to say. So this is the communication, and this is what we call a nonsense signal. So your frequency uh, transmission is basically, it can be completed uh, through two fashions. One can be through voltage-driven signals, and that is uh, with um, uh, vaccine, uh, the uh, needless vaccination, vaccination without needles, you just shoot the vaccine through the skin. Here you shoot the signals through the skin basin. The other way of doing it is through very ultra low energies, extremely, extremely low energies, in which energies the ion channels of the cells tend to open up and allow the signals to come through. And uh, this is how you can deliver it basically from the outside. There is a book written uh, called Electron Gate and Iron Signals. It's a book full of mathematical formulas. And it basically shows how at the certain energies that are below thermal noise, you have uh, the signals. This is the signals basically. And this is the ion channel. And this is how the signals go the host, right? through the ion channel because at this energy, the ion channels open up. I can get you a room there, guys. So examples of outside and inside communications are from uh, Ichid Dasaki and his colleague found uh, that uh, uh, vibrations that occur in the cochlea in response to sound were translated into electrical signals in the brain that the brain can interpret. That's a very interesting study. And also, there were other studies that resonant signals result in a rapid cell contraction and frequent cell spreading, uh, as uh, uh, seen in uh, microscopy. There are other cellular communication examples, especially from Cambridge University, where we have based most of our research as well, that you see the burst of photons and there is two cells communicating without any other mechanism, without your transmitters. The cells are communicating via a distance. It's through resonance pretty much. 
And this is a, basically a quantum phenomenon of two systems communicating with each other. Now, a result of this uh, was started in uh, very late in uh, 2006 and later. So, when you examine uh, 7,100 protein to protein communications, we found that protein to protein communications and the lack of is what aging is the result. So, aging is a more dynamic aspect of aging. Aging is the lack of communications between proteins, between cells. It's not that you don't have enough collagen, it's that you don't have the communications that actually bring this collagen. So how do you develop these signals now? How do uh, you have to basically focus on cell-to-cell -cell communication and also you have to focus on protein intra-communications between each other? And there is a lot of uh, independent studies and there is a lot of new microscopy techniques uh, that are uh, recently developed in Sweden that are a little bit less expensive. Uh, but this science is now developing, it's very new and it's uh, very sophisticated. What is thermal noise and how we develop the signals below thermal noise? As you can see, this is the level, this is the, uh, the voltage. See how tiny, tiny voltage it can be. And this is, this is the energies that are necessary to have the ion channels of the cell open up. But of course it's extremely complicated when you get technology because you cannot just get words and energies like that all that easily. Here now you see some examples of what this technology can do. And this is a necrotic wound. And after uh, five treatments, you can actually see the wound coming back to life. This was done by a liposuction that went wrong. And uh, there is a repair that started happening. This wound was like this for several months, and within six treatments, it started kind of changing, dramatically changing. This is a diabetic wound. This patient was seen a year later. There was no reoccurrence. The wound did not heal with any other methods previously. And uh, within six treatments, it did close. The year later, it was completely closed, and uh, there was no reoccurrence. This is another diabetic wound from Christina Preciado. As you can see, complete healing after four treatments. This is uh, actually an acute wound. This lady just cut her finger, and uh, we did it right away. We did the treatment right away, and this is about a week later. So it happens quite fast. Uh, chronic psoriasis is another demonstration of uh, what this technology can do. Uh, this is 10 treatments uh, from Veronica Yap in Singapore, a clinical study that she performed on psoriasis. Another example, another patient uh, with psoriasis treated with the Aelios, uh, 10 treatments. This is actually somebody who had an accident, a car accident. He scraped his hand. His plastic surgeon said to him that he would never ever be able to move his hand. However, uh, within uh, 15 treatments, his hand was completely healed. The only problem is he could not claim any money from the insurance company, which was a problem for him, but at least he could have his hand back. This is epsoriasis, this is just one treatment. Uh, this is actually a famous Chinese singer that uh, in a clinic in Hong Kong that we did. Uh, now, this is uh, also wounds on the face. This patient had radio frequency and lasers, and I think she did it a little bit too much. So we had to do the Aelios afterwards, and immediately we see the, uh, the face getting soothed, and there was an immediate improvement on the skin. 
this uh, patient also had these little bumps on the face. It doesn't show very well on the screen, but it's like these little bumps that people get on their skin. And this is uh, the results after a simple treatment. Now, some rejuvenation effects, of course. All of these things will have to rejuvenate when you repair the body. You will see anti-aging, you will see rejuvenation. So this is, as you can, this is again two treatments uh, before and after. Uh, observe the wrinkles. I don't know if you can see it very well here, but the, the wrinkles were completely gone. This is uh, a famous Chinese singer before and after. As you can see, there is lifting and rejuvenation on her skin. She looked much, much better in reality than you can see on the um, actual picture there. Uh, this is uh, two treatments. I think what you want to observe is primarily the pores on, this, on the nose were really very big and very unattractive and the wrinkles in the face uh, were significantly improved after two treatments. This is actually one treatment and you can see lift and you can see the wrinkles having improved. And also the skin coloring is much better. Uh, wrinkles, again, that's one treatment. You can see that's a close-up of the same patient. Uh, this is again only one treatment. You can see quite significantly uh, improved. You can see it's actually even better on this slide that it's much more improved, uh, especially here, I think, you can see more, and also on the eyes. And this is the eyes, I think you can see the eyes much better here and the before, the after, on the other side, it's a significant improvement. It's just one treatment.